guys, we're going to get into what's called a live solve. Now, a live solve is when we take a challenge and we solve it right here during Model Monday Live. And the challenge we're going to take is going to be this lens mount. We had a couple of people asking to see this as a tutorial. So we're going to go through and we're going to model this up as a tutorial uh, right now. So let me just flip over. I do have a new keyboard cam set up. I don't know if I like it yet. We're going to see. We're going to see how it goes. But at least you'll sort of be able to see my keystrokes. Mainly you'll see uh, when I'm using the S key or when I am or when I'm using the control key. Let's get into it here, guys. Welcome, welcome to this Onshape 3D modeling live solve. Our goal today is going to be to take a look at this 2D print here, this lens mount, and to come up with a 3D model from this 2D print. So whenever you get challenged to take a 2D print and turn it into a 3D model, you're gonna wanna follow some kind of basic steps to come up with your initial game plan. And one of the first things that you're gonna need to ask yourself is, where should the origin be on this model? Now, a lot of times you're gonna ask the second question, which is, does the model have symmetry? And you're gonna use that to help you figure out whether, where the origin should be located. So in this case, this model does have symmetry. Whenever we have these lines here that say CL SYM that's indicating that the model has symmetry so in this case the model has symmetry going across this line here and going across this line here and that tells me that the origin should probably be located right at the center of that crosshair if you know if you're not really sure how to decide it just takes practice you just got to practice 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 but this is a good kind of fundamental step that you can take. You can uh, get in here and look for areas where there's symmetry and locate the origin of the crosshair of that symmetry. Now, the other tool you can use to justify where the origin should be is, are there a lot of dimensions that all seem to be coming from the same place? And in the case of this dimension, this dimension, this dimension, these are all coming from the same place. They're all coming from kind of the base of this part. So I think that a good place for the origin would be maybe this location right here. So now we know where the origin is going to be, and that lets us move on to our next question, which is, what should the very first feature for this model be? And again, not knowing anything else about how this part is going to be used, how it's going to fit into an assembly, a lot of times we base that decision on where is the footprint of the part? You know, how is the part going to sit on the table or on the device that it's mounting to? And in the case of this part, it's going to sit on this face here. So I think that my very first feature is probably gonna be this extrusion for this uh, kind of trapezoidal shape down here. And so then what you can start to ask yourself is, what is my very first sketch gonna look like? And I think my very first sketch is gonna simply be a rectangle, 100 by 150 millimeters. And then what is my very first feature gonna look like? Well, I think I'm gonna take that rectangle and I'm gonna extrude it up to a height of 50 millimeters. Now from here, things get a little bit more tricky because this rectangle has draft on a sidewall of 30 degrees, but it's got a different draft over here on this sidewall of 15 degrees. So I'm not just gonna be able to do an extrusion with draft. Instead, I'm gonna have to create a draft feature after the fact and make really two different draft features, one for each of those angles. So now I've got that kind of base shape created. And the next thing you're gonna ask yourself when you're planning out your models is, what are, what are my next few features going to look like? And for a model like this, I think that what I tend to do personally is I tend to use a bridging strategy, meaning I don't create this feature first. And instead what I do is I create this feature next, create this kind of ring shape. And maybe I'll also create this upper section of that ring shape. And then once that geometry is complete, then I'll come back in and I'll create this post that's connecting those two, because that way I'll be able to just to go up to face. Now, another technique, you know, there's other techniques that you could use to accomplish this, but this is just kind of how I look at a challenge like this. I'll end up modeling this shape here kind of out in, in free space, the circular shape, and then uh, this, this shape up top here kind of out in free space, and then I'll create the post that connects those two. And so then the final couple of maybe tricky features would be like this drafted pocket at the bottom, and maybe this cut extrude, and this counter bore that's on a curved surface. Those might get a little bit tricky, but let's see what we can do in on shape to resolve the trickiness of those features. So now, like I said, before you actually start doing any 3D CAD, you wanna kinda of come up with a game plan. Now, I'm gonna take this geometry, I'm gonna move it over here to my second screen so that I can see uh, all the dimensions that I'm gonna need. And then I'm gonna jump into Onshape and try to create that model. So I'm gonna say create document, I'll call this 24-06-11-lens mount. 
in case anybody wants to um, look at this model while I'm creating it or wants to look at it after the fact. We'll call that lens mount. And now I'm going to start out top plane. I'm going to press S on my keyboard to bring up my S key menu and on shape. Launch the sketch command. I'm going to press N to get normal two. S key, launch the rectangle command. And then I'm going to use auto dimensioning in on shape to create my 150 by 100 rectangle. This was the first idea I had in my game plan. And now I'm applying that to the actual modeling strategy. So now I'm going to take that rectangle S key extrude. And I'm going to use tab, tab, tab to get to the height of this rectangle. 50 enter enter and now that rectangle has been extruded now i'm going to pick this bottom face here and launch the draft command and i'll use tab 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 again and i'm going to say this is going to be at 15 degrees and then the faces that are going to get the draft are going to be this face and this face now you can see that that draft is going outward that's not what i want so i click this button here opposite direction and now the draft is going inward and now i'm going to hold shift enter and when I hold shift enter here, it finishes the draft, but it takes me right back into the draft command again. So now I can pick this face and then for my entities to draft, I can choose this face and this face, reverse the direction and make those 30. Enter, enter, and there we go. We now have constructed that kind of foundational base for this design. So now I'm gonna go front plane, begin a sketch, orient my view and i'm going to create a sketch here maybe i'll start out with a line that starts at the origin and i'll press q that changes that line to construction because that way i can just type in 200 for the height and now i can press the s key jump into circle and i can create a circle here with a diameter of 155 enter and then i can create a second circle and for this one here's a little trick that not everybody knows about an on shape if you s key smart dimension and you pick between two concentric circles then on shape just gives you the wall thickness and that's actually exactly what we want from this drawing. So we're gonna make that 20 and enter. And there we go, that takes care of that feature. And now we're ready to take that and extrude it. So S key extrude, and I'm gonna press tab, tab, tab to get down to the extrude depth. That extrude depth is gonna be 60, enter. And then I'm gonna press tab, tab, tab to get down to symmetric, and I'm gonna press the space bar. Now, when you choose symmetric, what it does is it takes that 60 and it just moves your sketch plane to the middle of that 60. So it's not like it's doing 120, like 60 on each side. It's just doing 60 on uh, from the middle. It's like a mid-plane extrusion. So I'm going to hit the green check mark. That finishes that feature. And now I need to create this kind of uh, tombstone or the slot shape up top. So I think what I'll do is I'll pick this plane down here at the very bottom of the model. S key, plane. And I'm going to create a new plane here. So tab, tab. This new plane is going to be at 290. Enter, enter. Now I've got a new plane there that I can sketch on to create the geometry for that kind of slotted shape. Now we could uh, do this with a slot if we knew what the uh, dimension was between the, the different uh, arcs. But since we don't, it might make more sense to just click here, move across, click here, move back without clicking anything, move around. That puts us into a tangent arc. Click here, move over. Now we want this line to be exactly vertical to this point up here. So without clicking anything, I'll just put my point over or I'll put my mouse over this point. And now you see what OnShape does is it picks up on that location. And so I can click again, move my mouse away, come back, hold my mouse here. Don't click anything, just hold your mouse there. And that puts you into a tangent arc and then you can close off that shape. And that workflow of uh, learning how to construct a slot like that using a line and kind of jumping into the tangent arc command, that workflow is going to save you so much time if you learn how to do it efficiently. So now, so practice it, practice, practice, practice that workflow. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to begin a line and I'm going to press Q and just make that uh, uh, construction line that goes from point to point, hit escape, pick this point, pick this line, and then shift M is the shortcut to add a midpoint relationship, shift M to make that midpoint. So now that I've got that midpoint, I can just S key, jump into uh, my dimension command here. And in my dimension command, I'm gonna say that this distance here is 40. And I'm gonna say that the distance from this arc across to this arc here is 70. And then we're going to extrude that. So extrude, and this is gonna go up to a, a face. So up to face, and it's gonna go up to this face here. And that finishes that command. And uh, now I'm going to create the, the post that comes up from the bottom here. So pick this face, S key, uh, begin a sketch, S key again, create a circle here right at that origin. That's going to be 37 millimeters, S key extrude. And this is going to go up to face. I'm kind of increasing the pace a little bit here just because uh, we're going to end up running out of time. This is going to be an add and a merge with all. 
So there we go. And now on this top face here, I'm going to begin a sketch and I'm going to S key. And uh, for this one, really what I could do if I wanted to is I could just start out right away with the hole that runs through the very bottom of the part. So that hole has a diameter of 18. And then I could just take that hole. Whoops. Uh, looks like I picked up on a relationship by accident there. Maybe this tangency relationship. There we go. Let's try that again. So now we could take that hole at 18, S key, extrude, remove, through all, and check mark. Super chat train too. Thank you very much, Aaron C. Very much appreciated. Uh, very, very much appreciated. So now I'm going to pick this face here, begin to sketch. So now I've got that hole going through all, and now I could create a larger diameter here. This is going to be a larger diameter of 30, and then I could just create a, a rectangle here, just a center point rectangle. It just needs to kind of go out beyond the extents of the model. So this center point rectangle has a width of 10 for that slot, and then like maybe 120 for the overall width. And now I can take that geometry and I can do an extrude, and that's going to be a cut extrude and that's going to go uh maybe it's going to go blind or maybe it's going to go you know up to a, a a face uh we could probably do either one but i'll just do it blind here and kind of bring it into the middle and there we go that creates that geometry up at the top of the model um and you know sets us up i think nicely to kind of finish this thing off with one final feature which is going to be a sketch here on the very bottom face i'm going to sketch a circle and this sketch of a circle is going to have a diameter for that counter bore of 45. And then I'm going to go to my extrude cut extrude. So this is going to be a remove. And I'm going to use this option here, starting offset. Because on the print, it's calling out that counter bore at 135 from the base of the model. So we can see here that what we're going to end up with is that cut extrude, not starting down here at the base, but starting here and then extruding up. And then again, I could just make this blind or maybe go like up to a, you know, I could probably go up to a vertex and show that earlier sketch when I I uh, created the circle there. That would probably be my constant um, uh, reference that I would go to in a scenario like this. And so now the only thing left to do is to maybe assign a material color, which you really don't have to do when you're on the clock. I just like to do it to make it match the print and then assign a material appearance. So um, I'm down here in the part uh, in the list of parts here on the on the right right mouse button assign material. And then the material library that I'm using is the custom Too Tall Toby library. We do have a video about this on the Onshape channel, how to create this custom Too Tall Toby library. So this one is going to be ABS, and uh, we're going to hit the green check mark. And then down here in the lower right, we can choose mass properties, and we can choose this part. And we can see that we're coming up with a mass here of 1097, and that is not correct. Uh, I actually remember what the correct answer is, but I also just noticed that I forgot this final rectangle cut. So S key, uh, center rectangle, whoopsie, forgot a cut there. Um, and that one is going to be at 100 by 65 S key extrude remove. This is going to go up to a depth of 15 millimeters and it's going to utilize a draft and that draft angle is going to be 45 degrees. There we go. Let's do our mass properties again. And now we're coming up with a mass of 1035. And so is that correct? Let's find out. So we go over here to our live solve window. But uh, 1035 is the correct mass for that one. And I hope that, that helps anybody who was trying to uh, come up with the correct answer and work through that challenge using Onshape or really using any CAD system. Because like we showed in the beginning, there's kind of a standard game plan that you follow when you're trying to decide how to go from a 2D print to a 3D model. So if you guys enjoy that, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and um, that's going to do it. Oh, you know what happened here? I got, uh, I got backed up. In